Hi everyone, this is going to be a short video that goes over uh, an example of policy-based routing. So let's just go over the topology really quick. I have EIGRP enabled everywhere. Um, the link between R2 and R5, this is going to be a slow link, um, you know, whatever. Uh, the rest of the links are all just going to be basic, you know, Ethernet, uh, fast Ethernet, gig Ethernet links. Um, so in this case, they're all gig Ethernet. So what we're going to do is take a look from R1's perspective and see the path it takes to get to R6. So let's trace here. And not very surprisingly... Uh, due to that slow link, the traffic hits R2, comes down to R4, and then heads over to R6 this way. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to try to policy route this traffic to go a different way. Let's policy route it so that it goes from R1 to 2 over the slow link to R5 and then down to R6. Now... We don't want to mess with metrics to do this. Um, let's just say in this example, because we don't want to change the bandwidth on this slow link. We still want the other routers to know that this is a slow link. So what we're going to do is do policy routing. So we'll head over to R4 because R4 is the decision maker here. R4, I mean, sorry, not R4, R2. R2 can say, hey, let's go down to R4 or to R5. So since this is the decision maker, this is where we're going to want to implement the policy route. The first thing we're going to want to do is we need to create an access list. And I'm going to create an extended access list. And I'm just going to call it R1 because we're going to match R1's loop back. Um, so we're going to do, and actually, before I do that, I think when I did this trace, I didn't actually do it from the loop back. So I should just source it from the loop back so you can see. It does the same exact thing, two to four to six. So let's head over to two again, and we're just gonna match the um, host address of 1111 going anywhere. Now what we need to do is create a route map. This route map will be our policy routing. And what we need to do is match the access list that we just created. and then set the IP next hop. And in this case, our next hop should be this link here, which is gonna be 10.0.25.5. All right. So now that we have this, we have to figure out where to implement it. Now, with policy routing, what you need to do is implement it on the incoming interface. So we're going to need to take this and let me, I'll just do black. That's fine. When the packet comes into, to this link, this is the link that needs to, to set the, um, to set the next hop. <clears throat> so basically what's going to happen is the traffic is going to come here. It's going to take a look at this route map. It'll match this IP address, which we know is 1.1.1.1, and then it'll set the next hop to R5. So when it comes back, even though this is the route EIGRP is approved, um, EIGRP is choosing, due to the policy routing, we'll send it out this way. So let's go ahead and go to this interface of gig 112. And we'll use the IP policy command. And we can see we only have one option, which is route map. We pick the route map, which is policy underscore routing. And that's it. So now let's, uh, let me clear the screen a little bit. Okay. Now let's head over to R1. Let's do the same exact trace. And now we can see the traffic is different. It's going over our new policy based path. It's going from two to five to six. Awesome. 
Now let's just do the source of our gig 1.12 link. And we can see it's being routed normally because that was not included in our route map. So here's a pretty quick example of policy-based routing on Cisco routers. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And actually, before I finish the video, um, so most people have probably already clicked out, but just in case you didn't click out, let's head over to R2. And I just want to show route map because this is a show command you should see. And we could see that policy routing matches is six packets. So these were the pings that I sent over. And we could see in this too, uh, <clears throat> for sequence number 10, which is our first sequence, we're matching there and we're setting the IP address. So again, thanks for watching.